Hello, and today I'm going to talk about my 1301 class and my three essays in a reflective literacy. So this year, we we all, we I started off with my first essay assignment. It was an essay about our our literacy journey and who was and who was our sponsor of literacy. First essay was about my mother. She has has always been my sponsor of literacy because I've had many struggles in in reading and writing and a lot to do with stuttering and I mean I feel like that really impacted the way I write and even read if I don't read out out loud and I feel like with her always being behind me and encouraging me it helped me kind of blossom out of my shell and know that I can read I can write and she sometimes did it through tough love. Like she, she'd call me out. Like she'd be like, "Hey, this paper's trash." She made me rewrite it, and I really thank her for that because she helped me become a better writer and have more care in my schoolwork. And she's my sponsor of literacy. Some of the other, other things she did was she definitely helped me in writing more fluently, fluently, and trying to get over my struggles that I have with stuttering and she helped me break out of that shell of to be afraid of stuttering because I usually people usually don't listen to me because I stutter and she helped me become more fluent and less scared of stuttering and how not exactly conquering stuttering but how to how to tame it down so I don't feel so scared and I definitely had fun in this class and I hope that you definitely heard me not exactly stutter a lot but you heard more fluent words come out of my mouth and she helped me a lot she was my she, my mother she she was the best person in my life that I could ever ask for to help me on my literacy journey and she definitely helped me a lot and that was my first essay I wrote my second essay over code switching and I thought I would just show you some stuff and talk to you about bowling which is what I wrote the essay about because bowling to me has been a new hobby that I would just want to discuss and I feel like it's a good thing I can use for code switching because what do you what what when do you use bowling terms outside of bowling? So that video you just watched was of me bowling with this bowling ball, which is my favorite bowling ball. It's, I mean, it's blue. You probably can't read that, but it says vibe. That's the name of the bowling ball. And that video was just me at shenanigans, actually over the summer. I was just practicing because it was just a new obsession I found out. I mean, I found, which I didn't realize I did it. I liked it so much until after high school got graduated. And... This is my, this is my, I don't want to say, this is my other bowling ball I have. I really like it. It's called a Creed Rebellion. And well, there's some words that are, that have to do with bowling. And I'm, I'll tell you the word and then I'll tell you what it means. Uh, one of the first words I would say to, to discuss when bowling is like the lane. It is. There's, there's oil on the lane, and so we might use words of, like, is the lane dry today? Which basically means that there's little to no oil, so that balls like this one, which are designed to, which are designed to hook, which is basically, the, the hook is when the, the hook is when the oil, is when the ball leaves the oil, and it goes into the area of the lane that has no oil, and that's what creates that motion. And so if the lanes are dry, the, the ball is going to hook early, which is something that some people want and some people don't want when they're bowling because it will affect your score. And some people, it'll affect it really badly because they want to get that 300. And then some people, they'll, it'll affect them good because they might not, that just might be the kind of bowling they like to do. So that's what it means to be dry. Dry, dry, dry lane condition. Next thing 
when you're talking about bowling, I would say is the word react. Reaction is kind of like, you know, it's kind of like if, you know, you're acting calm and then you react so you go crazy. Well, that's exactly what happens with a bowling ball. You throw it on the, on the lane, so it's just, you know, chilling there, rolling down, and then once it gets out of the oil, it'll, re it'll react and go crazy, which, when it goes crazy, it hooks, and most of the time, that's when you get a sick strike. It looks really cool, and people go like, wow, he got a strike, that's nice. So yeah, that's what it means when a ball, the word react for bowling. So some don't know this, but I'm an identical twin, and we also use code switching in our own way. We might use it when we're trying to talk to each other and with a big group of people. So we can have like, I don't want to say like our own little conversation, but if one of us starts to feel uncomfortable, we're able to like pick up on those on those like <clears throat> body language that oh they're uncomfortable let's go help them out and be kind of I don't want to say his wingman but we do that to each other so it helps us kind of stay out of bad situations and another way we use code switching with each other is we kind of have our own language so my brother and I are we are able I don't want to say we're able to communicate without talking but we're able to do things so that people don't really pick up on them so it's kind of like our own secret language now I mean like also like Thomas and I so that's, that's 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 my brother's name he, my my twin brother's name we're able to also talk to each other we're like if we we can just mouth stuff to each other and because we basically know what the other other one's saying we can just kind of have a whole conversation with just not really like speaking with air but just mouthing the words and it's one of the cool things I think of when being a twin. So our third and last essay was of intentions and literacy and for me I guess that's the things I'm not so literate in and you know causes tension and for me I'm not really that literate in soccer because I've just I've I mean I've played soccer but I've never got into it enough to know what the rules are and to know how to be a, a to know what people talk about when they when they want when they want to talk about soccer. And for me, I feel like that like when people start talking to me about soccer, it makes me go like I I don't know I don't know at all. And yeah, that is what my what tensions and literacy were for me. So um, that was my reflective video for my final project in English 1301. I wanted to say that I had a very fun time this year and I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I really enjoyed this class and it taught me a lot especially about myself and how I can relate to these stories and it helped me a lot and knowing that for me I am good. Thank you, have a great day. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.